Hello, and welcome to Sum Integrals Preliminary Calculus Information. This is the sixth video, um, in which I'll be talking about intervals. And you can think of intervals as just being little sections of the real number line, which we'll be denoting using set builder notation. So if you're not familiar with that, I would go back and revisit set builder, no set builder notation. So let's just recall the real number line uh, looks something like this, right? We have a line, and I'll just specify here's 0 and here's 1. So I'll label this line R. But what's, and I can pick out points 0 and 1, but what if I want to talk about all the points between them? How do I denote that? So let's say I, I, I'll draw that with this open circle here and an open circle here. And that just means all of the points bigger than 0 and all the points less than 1. We could also write that using parentheses, but um, that, that'll make sense later on when we actually define the intervals. However, my notation usually just uses these open circles. So I'm going to define the open interval. This is what's called an open interval, what I'm trying to describe. So the, uh, I'm sorry, the open interval, the open interval between, let's take arbitrary points, let's say A and B, is a subset of R, or I'm sorry, it is the subset of R, denoted uh, with parentheses, parentheses A, comma, B parentheses, and it's equal to the set of all x such that a is less than x and x is less than b. So what does that mean um, visually? That just means if we have a real number line and here's our point a, here's our point b, I can just denote this open interval here um, with what's called this notation uh, parentheses a comma b parentheses label that. So um, this is describing all of the points that are to the right of B, uh, to the right of A, and at the same time are to the left of B. So it's all of the points strictly between A and B. So this will include, in this case with the 0 and 1, that includes all the numbers like 1 half, 1 third, uh, 3 quarters, all of the numbers between 0 and 1 are in this interval. Um, but what happens if I want to include the endpoints? So say, say I wanted to include 0 and 1. I normally would draw that with the filled in circles, right? I would say closed circle uh, at the left at 0 and then another closed circle at 1. Or some, some people will use brackets to denote that, which will again make sense with the notation. However, I prefer the, the circles closed uh, filled in circles. So I'm going to define that right here. The closed interval closed interval between A and B is the subset of R bracket A comma B end bracket. So uh, the brackets are just these square ones. They look kind of like uh, little half rectangles. Um, and I think sometimes I accidentally refer to these as brackets, these what are called curly braces. I sometimes refer to them as brackets by accident, but th those are braces. These are brackets. These, these square ones are brackets. The sort of wiggly pointy ones are braces. and Parentheses are just the curved uh, little arcs. So the closed interval between A and B is the subset of R, bracket A, comma B bracket, which is equal to the set of all x such that A is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to B. So all I did was I included the possibility that a, x was equal to A or x was equal to B. So what that looks like on the same 
analogous real number line is here's A, here's B. I filled in the circle. So I said it's possible it's possible that x equals a and it's possible that x equals b. So now it's the set of all points from a to the right and from b to the left at the same time. So you could think of this as being like an intersection, but um, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit uh, later. So we, we normally write that as bracket a comma b bracket. And the, the way you can read that is the closed interval from A to B. Or here, where we had the parentheses, you can read that as the open interval from A to B. However, uh, it's, there's nothing that's telling me that I can't mix and match. So I, I can use what are called half open intervals. So let's, let's take that same real number line from 0 to 1. And let's say I wanted to not include 0, but include 1. Then what I would do is I would use a half open interval. So as, as with open and closed intervals, Half open intervals are a subset of the reals. So half open intervals. Oh, th this is a definition. I should have said that. As with the open and closed intervals, half open intervals are uh, a subset of the reals of the form and we'll just mix and match those brackets and parentheses to denote which end is open and which end is closed. So if I wanted open at the left, closed at the right, I would write a uh, parentheses a comma b bracket. So it's a little bit of a jarring notation but it does make sense visually if you're using this notation. So parentheses a comma b bracket is equal to the set of all x such that a is less than x and x is less than or equal to b. So all we've done is mixed the two types of less than signs. Less than, um, a is less than x and x is less than or equal to b. And what that looks like on the, the diagrams I was drawing before is this. There's an open circle at A and a closed circle at B. Um, and sometimes we'll denote this as the half open interval open at A, closed at B. That's another way I'll say that. Um, but we can also do the reverse direction where I have closed at A, open at B. And we denote that bracket A, comma, B parentheses. And that'll be the set of all x such that a is less than or equal to x is less than b. So a is less than or equal to x, and x is less than b. So that just means it's the set of all points, here again with a and b, where we're taking it to be at a or to the right, and only to the left of b. So these are how we describe a whole bunch of different types of intervals. You use these parentheses to, uh, to show that it's not including the endpoint, and we use the bracket to denote that it is including the endpoint. So um, these are all types of what are called bounded intervals. So these are all bounded intervals. And by that, I mean that uh, they don't go on forever. It just stops at A and it stops at B. Or it, it, it includes B when, and it stops right there as well. So these are all intervals that stop after a certain point. So anything to the left of A doesn't matter for our interval. Anything to the right of B doesn't matter for our interval.
However, I can define unbounded intervals. So, unbounded intervals. But to do that, I'm going to need a bit of notation, which gets a lot of people in trouble later on. So, I'm just going to try and uh, head that off right now. So, let's say I want to talk about the interval going to the right. So, let's say we have A and B. And I want to talk about not the open side, you know, open at A going on forever to the right. What I'm going to use is the symbol plus infinity. Or you, you, you can drop the plus, sometimes it doesn't matter. But the important thing to note about this is the plus infinity is not a real number. So we cannot use plus infinity when we're talking about arithmetic. It doesn't work the same way that real numbers work. So we can't just use it like it's any other number. It's very different. It's a symbol that represents going forever to the right, going forever in the positive direction. Um, so when we, when we define our intervals, we'll say parentheses a comma plus infinity parentheses. Or you could just use infinity if you don't want to write the plus sign. But that's going to be the set of all x such that a is less than x. And that's it. It just means everything to the right of a. And we can do the same thing for a closed interval. Just bracket at a plus infinity. End parentheses. So that will be the set of all x such that a is less than or equal to x. Um, and when we use infinity as one of our, uh, as the quote-unquote boundary of our interval, um, the upper bound of the interval, we have to use always the parentheses because it's not a real number, so we don't talk about including it in the interval. Later on, you may think about infinity as a number, and later on, you may have to consider that as a possibility, but for right now, just realize that infinity is not a real number. You're not going to be doing the kind of arithmetic with it that you do with normal real numbers. So this is how we defined uh, a closed interval going forever to the right. And we can do the same thing going to the left, but we're going to be using the symbol minus infinity. So here's b, here's a. If I want to go forever to the left with uh, open at b, what I use is the symbol minus infinity. Again, it's not a real number, but we'll just use it for a convenient notation. So this will be the interval minus infinity with parentheses, b parentheses. So that's the set of all x such that x is less than b. It's the set of all x that are to the left of b. And I can do the same thing for a closed interval. I can do parentheses negative infinity comma b bracket. And that'll just mean the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to b. So these are unbounded intervals, right? Because they can go on forever in a particular direction. And there's only one other type of unbounded interval, uh, which is the real number, the whole set of real numbers. I could say uh, all of r is equal to the unbounded interval negative infinity comma uh, positive infinity. So that's another way of writing all of the real numbers because we're not including infinity and negative infinity at the endpoints. Um, however, it's usually just more convenient for me to write the, the double stroke r. Um, it takes up less space, so I, I tend to prefer writing the r rather than this interval notation. But we can think about something that we already spoke about, which is positive numbers. I can now write positive numbers as the interval from 0 to plus infinity. That's going to be the set of all x such that x is bigger than 0, or, or the way we were doing it before had the left endpoint first. So it would be 0 is less than x. 
So this is another way of writing the positive numbers, and I can similarly do the negative numbers. Those will be the this will be the interval parentheses negative infinity, comma zero, parentheses. So this will be the set of all x such that x is less than zero. And I can do the non-positives, right? The non-positive numbers. So this is everything that is not to the right of zero. So this will be negative infinity, comma zero bracket. And I can do the non-negatives. The non-negative numbers as uh, bracket zero uh, plus infinity. Okay, so these are other ways of writing sets that we already know. We've already seen what positive numbers are, but now we can write positive numbers as the interval from zero to positive infinity. We can write negative numbers as the interval, the open interval, uh, from negative infinity to zero. And I think that should be it for this video. Um, if you want, you can play around with other types of intervals. You can think about what it means to take intersections of intervals, right? So if I, let's say I have a, a real number line right here, and I have one, two, and three, and I talk about this interval, and let's say this interval. What does it mean if this is A and this is B? What does it mean for A intersect B? What does it mean for A union B? And uh, it's, it's a good exercise to understand that you can intersect and union these intervals because as I defined them, they were just subsets. A and B, or these intervals, are just subsets of the real number lines. So that means we can take intersections and unions of them. So just practice what it means. So if I were to intersect these two intervals, what would I get for my answer? If I were to look at their union, what would I get for my new interval? Okay, so uh, that'll be all for this video. Um, I hope it helps you sort of see how intervals are formed, what they look like, and how we write them, and specifically how we talk about them so that you can ask questions if you're not understanding a particular aspect of intervals. So uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.